In all honesty, I have no idea how to come up with a unique intro for my videos that will not make you too uncomfortable or make things too awkward, so... Subscribe! This is the earliest that I have started to record a video and I'm not sure that's great. Hello! Today we are doing something different and by different I mean more of the same, but in a different way. Today I wanted to cover the flowering spectacle that is my Hoya Mitrata and to make this video more interesting, I went off to the big bad internet and 10 hours later, here we are. It's more like 60 or 80 hours later because I had to sleep in between and generally do some existing. But I feel if I were to say 60 or 80 hours later, that would be way too dramatic. And also it would set you up for unrealistic expectations. Anyways, let's get started. I certainly don't want more of the shut the peduncle up and make a video that is less than 30 minutes long type of comments. And okay, in all honesty, no one says shut the peduncle up. I made that up. But you know, I get the gist. That's the gist. I can read between the lines. Actually, I can't read it all. I received my hair back in the day when the pandemic was still young and we all had hopes it would last a whole lot less than it is lasting now. You know, those days when we didn't all know the letters of the Greek alphabet and when the seas were not on fire. It was the summer of 2020 and July just rolled in. I purchased my cutting from Camilla and it arrived from Sweden as a small one node, two leaf cutting and it has grown a lot since then and so have I. Interpret that as you will. When I received the plant, I didn't really know much about it except that it is a myrmecophytic Hoya and what I noticed right away is that the new leaves that the plant started to grow looked a little bit different than the original leaves that the cutting came with. I didn't know back then, but I know now that what the plant had started to do, or attempted to do at least, is to form a multi-leaved domatia. Domatia are tiny chambers plants produce as housing for arthropods. In the case of Hoya mitrata, it is not just a single leaf, it is more of a structure. In some other plants, like some types of Dachydia and even with Hoya imbricata, only one leaf will serve as a chamber, where in the case of Hoya mitrata, things are a bit more complex. It is an all-inclusive five-star hotel. All jokes aside, these serve to provide housing and protection for ants and mites. When one species has this type of a relationship with another, we call that mutualism. And this is where it becomes plant nerdy. Mutualism is an ecological reaction. It is a relationship between two or more species where both or more have some benefit. There are two types of mutualism. We have obligate mutualism and facultative mutualism. From what I could read, in obligate mutualism, plants will produce special structures or domatia, where in facultative mutualism, only extra floral nectaries will be produced with no special structures. Unfortunately, due to the lack of time and how short the plant is going to be in bloom, I did not really have a chance to contact someone who specializes in Hoya research, but I did have a chance to talk to my friend who is a botanist and who keeps sending me Christia plants, aka the butterfly wing plant, to kill them. Honestly, I'm on my third one, I think. Gotta stop accepting them. Anyways, we had a short chat about how a plant would start to produce these domatia. From our conversation, it seems that in the beginning, perhaps there were more than one Hoya mitrata. Perhaps there were plants that did produce domatia and some that didn't. It is quite possible that the plants that did produce domatia outcompeted the ones that didn't. They grew more vigorously, and that is why we have Hoya mitrata that produces domatia today. Also, it is possible that this characteristic developed before the development of the species itself or that it's some sort of a dormant gene. Of course, this is all speculation. Further research needs to be done into this, but I just found it fascinating, so I wanted to bring it up. But then again, I found a lot of the things fascinating, so that really means nothing. 
Okay, it's time to take control of this ship and just go back to our main topic. Since Huamitrata produces Domitia and regular leaves, we would say that it has dimorphic leaves. It just means that it produces two types of leaves. And when you take a look at my plant, you can see these two types of leaves. Now, since my plant grew in cultivation, perhaps the Domitia is not fully formed, but it is a good attempt at it. A for effort. In my plant, the leaves that produce Domitia are much shorter, they are firmer, and they are more closed. The regular leaves are not as firm, they are a whole lot longer, and the internodal space here is much longer. You can see here where Domitia is formed, really the internodal space is very very short. There is barely any internodal space to speak of. When I was reading more about Hoi Metrata, they typically call these leaves type 1 and type 2 leaves. Type 1 leaves being the ones that form the Domitia and type 2 leaves being the ones that don't. On plants that have been found in nature, they have measured that type 1 leaves or the leaves that form Domitia can become quite big. They measured that one of these leaves can be up to 32 centimeters in length, which is clearly not the case with my plant. What they also noticed is that the length of the leaf or the size of the leaf will depend whether the Domitia is inhabited by ants or not. So if it is inhabited by ants, it will be much longer. Now, my plant is in cultivation and the Domitia are not inhabited by ants, hopefully, which would explain why they are shorter. What I found interesting is in the publication they say the type 2 leaves, or the leaves that do not form the Domitia, are up to 12 centimeters in length. This is definitely not the case with my plant. This leaf is 20 centimeters in length, and I think it is this one as well. They do not form the Domitia. Now, there could be several reasons why this happened. First, my plant is in cultivation and not in nature. Second, plants that have been found in nature probably grew under stronger light. What I observed from growing Hoya is that sometimes, with some species, the more light you give them, the smaller the leaves will become. And really, when you look at my plant, you can see as we get closer to the top, the leaves are becoming shorter and shorter, and that's because the top of the trellis is, of course, closer to the light than the bottom of the trellis. Personally, I am more of a fan of these big leaves. I think they are beautiful. I mean, this one, it's, it's cute, but we like this guy better. Another interesting thing with the leaves that form Domitia on the plants that have been found in nature is that the underside will be deep purple. Again, I'm not sure if this is due to the fact that this plant is growing in cultivation, that there are no ants, and also there is lack of ant droppings and stuff, so maybe, you know, it's some nutrient that causes this, but my Hoya metrata and the leaves in the Domitia are really not deep purple. This one has a bit of purplish hue, if you can see, which you cannot. This one has a bit of purplish hue, but it's definitely not deep purple, as it is the case on the plants that have been found in nature. You can see with the leaves that produce Domitia that they kind of point downwards and the tip is curved downwards. And this is to keep the chambers inside dry, so to offer protection for the ants. In nature, what you will find in these chambers is ant droppings and possibly dead ant bodies that the plant will use as a source of nutrients. In an analysis that was done in 1995 on the Shirya Major in Sarawak, it has been shown that 29% of the plant's nitrogen actually comes from the debris that is in Domitia. It has also been observed with Hoa Metrata that if the Domitia is inhabited by ants, the plant will start to produce a massive root system there. And really, we can conclude that the main purpose of this is 
is to take the nutrients from this debris that is in Domitia. Of course, the plant will produce aerial roots to attach to the tree, but the massive root system will be around this Domitia. That is clearly not the case with my plant because there are no ants, no dead ant bodies, no ant poop, which we are grateful for. Another fascinating thing about Hoya metrata, or at least fascinating to me, is that this Domitia type structure is very unusual with myrmecophytes. Usually only a rhizome or a leaf will be transformed. It is said that these Domitia type structures are only known to exist in Tillandsias. So maybe this little baby wants to be a Tillandsia. Please don't. I like Hoyas more. As you can see, my Hoya metrata is in bloom. This is the sixth day, perhaps, that this plant is in bloom. I'm not really sure. I think it started to bloom on Friday, and today is Wednesday. Yeah, that is six days. I had to do some finger counting to be sure. I'm not quite certain how long these blooms will last, but I can tell you that they still look fresh to me. They are very beautiful too. If only my camera would learn how to focus. Perhaps in a follow-up video, I can let you know how long the plant stayed in bloom. What I can tell you is that the flowers definitely do smell. And another interesting thing, I detected two types of smell. Possibly, I'm not really sure. In the morning, in a fresh room, they smell like lilac flowers to me, but very, very faint. It's not overwhelming. In the night, however, the smell is a bit different. When all the lights are out and when it's completely dark, I start to detect a bit of peppermint smell to it. It's really strange. I think it reminds me of sweet black licorice, but also maybe I just wanted to eat sweet black licorice. Not sure, but definitely the smell is much stronger, at least to me, it is much stronger at night. And really, when all the lights are out, then that is the case in the morning. So probably some evening pollinators here. Who pollinates you, baby? During the day, you will not detect any type of scent. And it doesn't really make much of extra floral nectaries. At least my plant still didn't produce any extra floral nectaries. I find Hoya metrata very easy to grow. I have had this plant for 15 months and I think it grew quite well. Remember, this is only from a two leaf, one note cutting and the original leaves are, don't esta, I think this one, that is the original leaf and this little bad boy here, until the May of this year, I grew this plant in a net pot, in a cover pot, in a mix with sphagnum moss and pine bark, and it did really well. It was at that time that the plant produced this Domitia. It took about maybe less than 12 months to produce this. If you watch my channel, unfortunately, that is the time that I had the root mealybug episode. So what I decided to do is cut the roots entirely on this way because it was one of the plants that was in danger, so I got rid of the root system because that is the most efficient way, it is the fastest to get rid of the root mealybugs. And I just put it in this pot with some leca and rocks on top. I typically will root the cutting first in distilled water with some algamic before I put it in semi-hydro, but really, at that time I had to deal with 100 plants I didn't have time, I didn't have space, so I just put it in a leca and called it a day. And it rooted. Sure, the leaves were floppy in the first two or three weeks, but it did not lose a single leaf, and it rooted after that quite easily, actually. Aside from baby leaves that probably fell off due to me underwatering, this plant really did not lose any of the leaves. I never had any yellowing on the leaves. I really never had any issues growing this plant, aside from the root mealybugs, but that is not the plant's fault. Since we are talking about rooting plants, here's the annoying part. It is extremely difficult, and believe me when I say extremely difficult, to pot this Domitia structure when you are working with a bit of stem. And I was not working with a bit of stem, I was working with, I think, this chunk of a stem. Still very difficult to pot 
the cutting. And the reason for that is because these Dimatia leaves, you can see, they will actually close around the stem. I will try not to drop this. This is where it becomes challenging. You can see that the plant really works hard to push those leaves down to close around the stem to form the chamber. So I had to kind of move them a bit so I could pot the cutting. And when it comes to propagation, I think it would be nearly impossible to propagate this plant from any of the parts that form the domitia. Simply, the internodal space is less than one centimeter. You would have to take a big cutting and you would have to get rid of a lot of the leaves. Maybe you can take a cutting of the entire domitia, which good luck finding that. I'm not sure if anyone would be willing to sell that. But uh, I think the best way is really to take some of the cuttings from the other parts of the plant. As you can see, the plant really produces a very long internodal space. So for example, if I were to take this cutting, I would have a lot of stem to work with there. And I assume, I cannot be certain, but I assume that the plant would start to form a new Domitia den. I keep my Hoya Metrata on my Hoya shelves. There is the one here. There is another one that you don't see under a 20 watt light. When it was a smaller plant, it was under a 36 watt light, but as it kind of grew and as I figured out things with my plants, I switched the 36 watt for the larger plants to 20 watts because they were getting very close to the light and I didn't want to have burnt leaves, very sun stressed leaves or burnt tips of the vines. I'm not into it. And you can see the plant really doesn't mind. It, in fact, bloomed under that light. Now, of course, the Hoya shelves are next to my northwest facing windows, which don't really get a lot of light now. They do get more light in summer period. But also what I think that helps is keeping the lights on for longer periods of time. I keep my lights on from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. because Miro is not on timers and sometimes on weekends when I sleep in or when I attempt to sleep in, I am blinded by the lights when they all turn on at 8. It is wonderful. I love it. The humidity in my room is around 45 to 60 during the summer. It is lower in summer because the windows are open all the time and I don't really use a humidifier. In winter, the humidity is, well, through the roof. This morning it was 88%, so I had to turn on my dehumidifier. And I know a lot of people constantly ask me questions about the humidity. I don't use a humidifier, it is just an old house. And some of the decisions that were made with building this house were perhaps not the best. I did have a mold issue, but you know, the mold issue was there before the plants. I did take care of it this summer and I think for two years at least, it should be okay. But I also constantly use dehumidifier during the winter to try to keep it at 60. So that's the long answer or explanation. So I don't try to have high humidity, it's just what it is. And for all of those asking about mold, yes, it does happen. It happened before the plants, it happens with the plants, but I aggressively took care of that. The temperature I grow this Hoya Metrata in is just my standard room temperature and I had to write the Fahrenheit's down because I can't convert. It's 24 or 25 degrees of Celsius, which is around 75 degrees of Fahrenheit. And that is usually for spring, fall, and winter. Sometimes it will get cooler towards the night, but it will never be less than 21 degrees, which is 68 in Fahrenheit. Sorry, I have to keep checking what I wrote about those temperatures. Really, we should all get on board with Celsius. In summer, it does get a bit hot, especially this summer, I'm sure wherever you are in the world, there was a heat wave, unless you are in Lille, friends. Hello, Betsy. I won't lie, I'm feeling a little bit sour about the fact that I've been sleeping with winter blankets since the end of July. Anyways, it was over 30 degrees of Celsius. For some reason, I did not convert that to Fahrenheit, so you can do that. The plant is in semi-hydro and initially I thought that it started to grow much faster in semi-hydro, but that's not really the case necessarily. I think it produced the same amount of leaves. It's just that 
when it was starting to grow, it was forming this domitia, which I found very annoying because it's a cabbage type structure. And I was wondering when will I get the vine? I should really have researched the plant much sooner. But all of this starting from here is the growth from May of this year. So this happened from July to April and then it started to grow bigger leaves. But you know, there are a lot of leaves here. You cannot really see, but there are 10 leaves. And this is the thing, the Dometia that Hoematrata produces will be a 10-leaved Dometia with all of the Hoematratas. Of course, unless some of the leaves fall off, it will be a 10-leaved Dometia. The same will happen with Hoya Darwini, it will also produce a 10-leaf Dometia, and I think Hoya Undulata will produce a 10-leaf Dometia. Now, with my Hoya Undulata, I do have less than 10 leaves, but I think some of the baby leaves fell off, and I know that we lost one leaf in the shipping. But you can see it will also produce this cluster of leaves here. I think I counted seven leaves here, but I'm pretty sure it would be 10. It is not as tightly packed as it is the case with Hoya Mitrata, but it is still said to be Dometia because it is also a myrmecophytic plant. When my Hoya Mitrata was in bark and moss, I would typically water it once a week. There were times when I skipped a watering and very quickly when the mix gets dry, the leaves would lose the firmness. Don't judge me. Would you just all admit that you skip watering for a week or is it just me? What I noticed is that this plant really does like moisture around the roots. It's just that you need an airy mix as we have previously discussed many, many times. Again, I never lost the leaf due to overwatering and the reservoir is always, let's pretend it's always, it's most of the time the reservoir is full, but sometimes I will skip the watering. The leaves will stay firm when the plant is watered. They're not super firm like Hoya undulata. I'm just checking now. They're definitely not as firm. They're still very pliable, but I think once you water the plant and when you don't water it, you will, you will feel the difference. I just almost slapped myself with the plant. Let's be careful here. When it was in moss and bark, I would feed it with every watering and still in semi-hydro, it does get fertilizer each time I water. The fertilizer that I use is Rain Mix by Akerna, and this is not sponsored, but you know, if Akerna wants to send me a lifetime supply of fertilizer and some orchids, I'd be down with that. Imagine all the hoas that I could grow. The fertilizer that they sell is a European version of MSU fertilizer that you can find in the United States. It is basically a fertilizer for orchids that is well balanced. It comes in powder form, so it's water soluble, very easy to use. I love it, my plants love it, so that's that on fertilizer. But in general, any type of orchid fertilizer that is of better quality, I believe, will do. I have to say, I find Hoya to be quite a resilient plant. To me, it's not difficult to grow. I know that some people say it's difficult. I never really had issues. So that also kinda gives me some courage to try maybe Hoya Darwini. Maybe I want all color forms of Hoya Darwini now. We'll see. They say that Hoya Darwini is much more difficult and Hoya Darwini, Hoya Metrata, and Hoya Undulata are kinda related. They are similar in some ways and Hoya Darwini is said to be the most difficult out of them. I think, to me, Hoya Undulata and Hoya Metrata are on par. Maybe we can do a comparison in the future. It would be nice to have both of them in bloom at the same time. So, listen, Hoya Undulata. We are waiting on you. I'm talking to my Hoya. It's right there off camera. It's not as popular. I don't see that many people growing this Hoya. Again, not quite sure why. I find it very easy, very beautiful. Uh, Maybe it will be popular in the future, but if you can get a hand on it, I definitely recommend it. 10 out of 10 Miro's approval, which is a new thing that we're starting now. I don't know. But I definitely have to say that I do have a new pound appreciation for this plant. I always liked it, except, you know, maybe during a brief period where it was forming the Dometia. But now that I understand it more and that I know more about it, I love it and I would like more plants that have similar growth habit. That's weird. 
Maybe I should just grow cabbage. That is a wrap. I don't know how long this recording is, but I think I have several videos. Can I lean on the table without shaking the camera? Probably not. I hope you had a good time listening about Hoemetrara, about myrmecophytic plants. What else did we discuss in the video? Many, many things, I think. I think I'm too close to the camera. Let me just go back a bit. Do let me know what you think about Hoya Metrata. I think it's a lovely plant. I hope that you agree. If you don't agree, don't tell me. <laughs> Freedom of speech does not exist here. Also, let me know if you like these more informative videos. It's a bit different than the rest of the videos that I do that are spotlight videos. I think this one is a bit unique because we went to the myrmecophytic plants and to the mutualism, which, by the way, is a topic that I would like to explore in the future, this mutualistic relationship. And my friend, the botanist, told me that there is a very fine line between mutualism and then when it turns to parasitic relationship. So I would like to get more info on that. Let me know if you would like to hear that. And if you would, maybe one day there will be a video. If you enjoyed the video, give me your thumbs. Just kidding, that sounded a bit sick. Uh, give the video a thumbs up. It's really not me, it's the YouTube that wants your thumbs. Sick bastards. It helps the whole algorithm thingy, blah, 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 blah. You know, more engagement, more whatever stuff. Algorithm, I said that. <laughs> Make a story out of that. Maybe what I should really research is how all of this YouTube thing works. If you're not subscribed to the channel, this is a great opportunity to do that in this corner. Or in this one. I will never learn. But anyways, press that subscribe button. Press it, I say. Touch it, I say. <laughs> I'm channeling Maleficent here, obviously. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you very soon. Bye! I would like to take some time to thank my patrons. A massive shout out to my $5 patrons. One anonymous patron, Betsy Begonia, Bonnie Harris, Carrie, Danube Daniels, Hoes and Whatnots, Kelsey Jager, Kristen Sherwood, Mars B, Martina, Alif Perday, Melissa Walker, Nicole Ferranti, PJ, Rachel Collette Conroy, Robin L. Jennings, Stephanie H2O, Spinach Geek, Tanya TJWO, Vicky Dingler, and Zlokobny Pony. Also, a big thank you to my $3 patrons, Angelina Farnan, April Arroyo, Brianna Phillips, Catherine G, Jerry's Garden, Lisa Helling, Lori Murphy, Morgan Kennedy, Nikki, and Ringlov. And a thank you to my $1 patrons, Caroline, Dinsla, Jacinta, and Valkyria S. I hope that you're enjoying the videos. And once again, thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot to me. I will see you very soon. Have a wonderful day and go get and buy more Hoyas. That's a great advice.